Gruß, uh, willkommen in einem and in einem anderen Video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case, episode 5 of my game design series of videos. In this video, I'll be providing a brief overview of World War II and Cold War battalion scale rules. This represents the fourth update to this video, covering more rules and cleaning up the format. While this video series was originally designed for those wishing to design their own rules, this video is now of more interest to anyone who wishes to know what rules are available in this scale. This video will cover rules, which I call battalion scale, where each element or base represents a battalion of infantry or 45 to 60 tanks or armoured fighting vehicles. This allows a player to command up to four divisions. As a note, most images used in my video come from about a dozen games using 6 mil at battalion scale, which I did. However, to add some extra bling, I've included various images I've obtained, obtained from the internet. After all, the main drive behind figure gaming is bling, so I need to always make sure that bling is maximised. Prior to 2006, there were no commercial sets of rules which catered for this scale. There were many gamers who had an interest in larger scale games, and once rules became available, this scale has grown since. Uh, this may have been due to board gaming. When this scale first appeared in 2002, even if it was a very ad hoc set of rules, there was a lot of excitement in the gaming community. Unfortunately, the initial rules either provided pro proved too simple or required too much record keeping, so they did not last beyond the initial excitement phase. This scale has never really taken off in a sustained manner, although it is slowly growing in popularity. Part of the issue is a lack of good rules which, with the required ecosystem players expect these days. This may be due to the difficulty of designing rules at this scale for figure gamings. Due to this difficulty of designing a set of battalion scale micro armor rules, it was not until 2002 that the first one became available. So when I initially created this video, I did not really have much to work with. Several years later, I have found several more rules, although I must admit it's not exactly overwhelming. If you want to have a game which can be completed comfortably within a day, you need to limit the number of elements per side to 50, or less. If each element represents a battalion, then a player can be expected to field about four divisions. If a division consists of about 12 elements, our limit is four divisions per side, which allows players to command a core. This scale does offer interesting scenario possibilities, with players being able to field up to six divisions, where several divisions enter the playing area during the game. As long as the average number of elements over the entire length of the game does not exceed 50 elements per game turn, you will fall within my optimal game limit for a good game, or at least a acceptably short game. While well, not really that significant, rules which use this scale normally employ combat units which are regimental size. However, most of the rules I use at this scale rapidly result in the elements going wherever they're required, irrespective of regiments or even divisions. So at battalion scale, combat units are rare. Now let's look at headquarters. Almost all sets of rules possess two levels of command, a CNC, which represents a player, and several subordinate sub-commanders, and then of course the combat units, or in most cases at this scale, the individual elements themselves. At this scale, the CNC is a corps or Russian army HQ, that's World War II, and the sub-commanders are divisions or Soviet World War II armoured or mech corps HQs. This lists all the battalion scale micro armor rules which were published since 2002. Only Mega Blitz, Divisional Commander and D-Day to Berlin are published rules. KISS is a reasonably finished set of rules with the remaining rules in beta or development stage. The issue with this scale is, it's, is it requires a total rethink of how you play a game or even design a game. This requires testing and a very different mindset to standard figure gaming rules. I cannot say the development of rules in this scale has reached, uh, let's say, a mature stage, which means that um, at the present moment it's still developing and as a result I would expect a lot of innovation. While there are several different trends at this scale, the major trends are the traditional figure gaming trend where elements and units can move anywhere and board gaming trends where some form of grid regulates movement and in some case combat. Both systems have their positives and negatives for figure gaming and both are used for figure gaming at this scale to various extents, depending on the rules of course. Another interesting trend at this scale is the use of big bases or movement trays. Many of the rules use a big element system where a large element contains several standard elements which basically act as strength points. Thus, a set of rules may have an element scale of a company 
but the big element represents a battalion. In this case, I call this a company scale of rules to a large extent. Some of these rules use a big base or movement tray, which represents a regiment, and the elements actually represent real battalions. This actually fits into our battalion scale system or video. Another way of determining what set of rules are considered as battalion scale is that we need to look at the game scale using our 50 element limit. If the game scale is core, we are dealing with a true battalion scale set of rules. That is the, that is the player commands the core. If the game scale is divisional, then we're probably dealing with a company scale set of rules, although DBA World War II may be the exception because it could represent a core on a larger playing area. I've kept some of the company scale rules here because the rules make a special point of claiming that they are battalion scale. This is because the big element, the movement tray, is a battalion. I'll leave it up to the viewer to decide where these particular rules actually fit into our scale paradigm. In April 2002, Norman Mackenzie Desert Rules, called Kiss Rommel, was published in the British Wargaming magazine. It was designed to allow players to fight operational campaigns in the desert. The formation scale is difficult to pin down, but the German Panzer Division consists of 12 elements, which most likely puts it in the battalion scale. Each day consists of between 9 and 12 game turns, which uh, makes each game turn between 60 minutes and 120 minutes. As activity stops at night, and I can't find any rules for fighting at night, I have to assume the l scale is actually most likely 60 minutes. The ground scale is 1 mile is 3 inches, making the scale 1 to 21,120. But this scale is also logarithmic, so varies a great deal. My guess is that the tactical scale is 1 in 6,500, and the operational scale is 1 in 43,000. My actual numbers may be incorrect, but uh, the logarithmic ratio is reasonably accurate. The game system is very simple, with one side being the phasing player or mover and the other side the non-phasing player or defender. It seems to use a combination or combined movement and combat system with the active player moving until it can spot an enemy and is within firing range. At that moment, shooting occurs. Movement can only be in a straight line and there is no close combat. All combat is by shooting. This is a very simple game system, akin to Lost Battles by Philip Sabin, and it could easily be played as a board game. This represents a valid solution to the problem of a battalion-scale micro armor figure gaming set of rules, but would be more attractive to board gamers rather than pure figure gamers. There were three sets of rules released for KISS, Rommel, Blitzkrieg 1940 and Northwest Europe 1944. There was a following set of rules called High Command that is based on KISS Rommel and was published in 2006. There are several volumes of that set. Three of them are in English, covering North Africa, Eastern Front and the Pacific, and I suspect that uh, that particular set was originally written by an Italian in Italian. Mega Blitz by Tim Gow represents the first serious attempt at a battalion scale set of rules. Published in 2002, it was designed to allow players to conduct operational scale conflicts. Each element represents a full battalion and the strength points are used to keep track of the element's combat capability. At two hour game turns, players could conduct games lasting up to two to four game days. Each division would consist of 12 to 18 elements, allowing players to field two or three divisions per side and complete a game in a day. To achieve this almost all the flavour of the figures used were removed, making the figures more like board gaming pieces, which is one way to solve the issue of designing rules at this scale. However, this is still a true figure gaming set of rules, and they work reasonably well. The only real issue I feel is more effort needs to go into the charts and tables and supporting material. The one thing that I don't like about this is the record keeping. In 2004, Bruce McFarlane made available Decision Commander in PDF form. At a game turn scale of one day, this represents a massive change from what most rules provide and allows players to refight conflicts that could last for several weeks. There was a major focus on command, and as a formation became disordered, its ability to follow commands were reduced until it went to ground. This, while present in rules such as Core Commander and Lightning War Red Store by the use of fatigue, was a significant innovation due to its simplicity. As with Mega Blitz, this had a very board game feel to it, but did avoid a board game style of movement regulation, such as squares or hexes. So I do consider this a true figure gaming set of rules without the feel of playing a board game. Assault Gun is 
probably the most interesting set of rules in my list. Um, it's an interesting set of rules, and I think that it has real potential. The ground scale is in kilometres, so any element size can be used as long as they are consistent. The rules suggest an element width of 2 centimetres is 1 kilometre, but most players would possess 3 centimetre wide elements. Armour uses a battalion scale, an infantry and, regi- and artillery regimental scale. Infantry regiments have double width, so I expect most players would simply double up elements in this case. At a scale of 1 in 50,000, the only weapons which have a range are indirect fire weapons. Each unit or element has a strength between 0 and 9, so you need to keep track of strength points, which is probably its only real downside. The sequence of play for the day is retreat, move, rec move, combat and movement. There is simultaneous combat and movement, with combat occurring during a move. Drilling into the sequence of play, you basically move into contact for you move into contact for combat to occur the following game turn. World War II rules are another interesting set of freeware rules. The sequence of play is move and combat. It includes command control and orders. Only indirect fire weapons have a range. Surprisingly enough, engineering, air power and naval support rules are included. The rules are brief, consisting of 13 pages, most of which is designer's notes. I suspect these rules are incomplete and require players to fill in the gap that they may come across, but another worthy attempt at a battalion-scale set of rules. You can always rely on someone converting DBA into another period. DBA World War II, in DBA World War II, you command a 12-element division size formation. Most players will be familiar with DBA. This simply replaces ancient figures with World War II figures. The only issue is base sizes, as most World War II figures are based on 3cm wide elements, and these rules suggest 4cm. This is not a major issue, as DBA uses the base width distance system within it, so players can basically ignore this recommended width of 4cm. The rules contain an extensive army list and cheat sheet, as there are a lot of modifiers based on troop types. Richard uh, Afanati's High Command is an evolution of Kiss Rommel and is pitched as grand tactical rules for the Second World War. The original rules are for the Eastern Front, but there are variations for the Desert, 40-43, Italian Front, 43-45, Western Front, 44-45, and the Pacific, 41-45. Just like Kiss Rommel, the initial focus of High Command are the tactical rules used to fight a battle. In particular battle, the Commander-in-Chief commands a corps, or alternatively a Soviet army, of four divisions, or Soviet tank mech corps. Each stand as a battalion. Battles are fought on a 5 by 4 foot table, comprising a grid of 20 zones, each 12 by 12 inches in size. Battle lasts one day of 9 to 12 turns. Supply is only used in the victory conditions. If you capture all three enemy supply bases, you can declare an immediate victory. In 2015, War Plan's beta was made available on the internet. I have not studied these rules as they are incomplete. They seem to be similar to Schwerpunk, as when formations were engaged, they were frozen in place. Only unengaged formations could move around. The game turn scale indicates not much happens during each game turn, and it seems each element is ubiquitous. Thus, most of the flavour of the figures have been removed. While these rules avoid the feeling of being a board game, many of the board game features of Mega Blitz remain. It will be interesting to see what these look like when they are completed, if they are ever completed. Rommel is another board, board gaming style figure game with play occurring across grids. The player takes the role of a general commanding an entire division or elements of several divisions or an entire corps or even an army. Units represent companies and battalions. The full advanced game features are large battles and multiplayer games, a complete army and battlefield creation system for fictitious scenarios, including 13 army lists with six major powers, guidelines for players who want to create their own historical scenarios from famous battles, detailed rules for things like Amphibious and airborne operation, cavalry, minefield, pioneer and special assault units, and much, much more, according to the blurb. A unique scenario creation system allows for players to bid for the resources with which to create their armies and then automatically adjust scenario conditions and choices accordingly. This is an interesting innovation, which I kind of sort of copy a little bit in my ad hoc card system, and I think is probably the main reason why you'd be gravitating towards these rules. There are no scripted attacker and defenders. Instead, a player who chooses to fight at disadvantage in points has many advantages in the creation of the scenario. Once again, a critical element if you're going to do an ad hoc scenario generation system. I particularly use cards. I'm not quite sure what these rules use. 
D-Day to Berlin, based on Kiss Rommel, with insights from both Rommel by Sam Mustafa and Great Battles of World War II by Bruce McFarlane, have moved into a zone-based system. This is not a new idea, and in ancient rules arena, such as Lost Battle by Philip Sadom, is an example of a very, which is an example of a very successful implementation of the idea, is comparatively common. In summary, the game is regulated by squares, called zones, which are three times the width of an element base. These zones act as hexes in a board game, with movement ending when you enter a zone adjacent to an enemy zone. Each zone has a stacking limit and is considered to represent a single type of terrain, such as clear hills or rough terrain. The first segment is initiative, and the initiative system is a standard determine who moves first system, following a support segment where artillery and aircraft are allocated. Then we move into the player segment, starting with rally phase, movement phase, engineering phase, combat phase, and ending with a supply phase. The opposing player then repeats this. This represents a standard but advanced and optimal sequence of play. Movement and combat remains as separate activities for simplicity purposes, similar to a standard board game. I'm uncertain when version 1 was first available, but it would have been after 2002 and possibly only a few years before 2019. But as I only have a version 2 copy and I am unaware of anyone playing with this ver- with version 1, I'm uncertain how popular these rules really are. My conclusion is these are a significant development of the KISS game system and is a set of wor- rules well worth keeping an eye out for. The rules are being updated and enhanced, with version 5 now being available. I suspect it's possible these rules may become the the state-of-the-art for this style of rules, as the designer is putting an enormous amount of energy into his rules, particularly with updates and enhancements and supporting material. Bloody Big Battles World War II also has a regimental scale. The regimental scales uses an element which is half a battalion scale, which are grouped into large elements. We covered this, or we covered the other scale in the previous video. Each large element is three times larger than the standard element, with standard elements placed inside the larger element, or movement tray, to reflect its combat capability and strength. While the element scale is half a battalion, they are normally placed up to three deep in the large element, or movement tray, thus would be considered a battalion scale set of rules. While the big bases or elements or movement trays are regimental in size, the individual elements within it can leave the regiment and move and fight, which is the only reason why I class it as a battalion scale set of rules. However, this is rather rare, and these may be better classed as regimental scale sets of rules. Once again, players will need to determine what they think is the correct scale of these rules. I suspect at this scale, a lot of the flavour has to be removed to make it work, but this still allows players to command a core and play a game over two to four game day period, Bob is working on the rules, and if you assist him with playtesting, he'll provide you with a set of the most up-to-date version of the rules, which are very playable indeed. If you do not wish to do this, the beta version of the rules are available in the Grosche Schlatten IO group, and you can, with some effort, use these to play a game. I covered the battalion scale version of Bloody Big Battles World War II in the company scale video. It's in this video because the big bases are supposed to be battalions. So I suppose in some ways you could actually assume that it's a battalion scale set of rules. However, I really do class these as company scale because the individual elements within the movement trays are actually company size. Core level combat actions are also rather interesting as they look like they are a conversion of a board game into a figure figure gaming format. It uses zones of control which are based on the width of an element, although the Zox also contain the attribute of a movement tray with figures placed within each Zoc. A Zoc or Z-O-C-C is 2 by 3.5 inches in size, within which can be placed multiple figures, 6 being the stacking limit. Each unit can perform up to three actions, with tests required in the second and third action. Because everything is based on these pseudo-movement trays, the game scale is closer to divisional, with each player commanding a division. If the playing area is large enough, I would expect a player to be able to command a core. The sequence of play is based on card, another interesting innovation that is introducing cards into this kind of figure gaming scale is an interesting idea. The version of the rules I possess are playtest rules, so I'm uncertain when the formal ones will become available. But these do look like a fun set of rules which you should keep an eye out for. 
Neue Schwerpunk is a conversion of the SPI Modern Battles game system into a figure gaming format. The standard rules play exactly the same as the board game, with the only changes the being the replacement of zones of control, that's hex-based zones of control, with the concept of base width movement, uh, movement zones of controls, and combat zones of control, which are all based on base widths. This means there are no ugly hexes or grids on the playing area, which these days I find important if you want to avoid your figure gaming set of rules or game feeling like a board game. The optional rule provides a wide range of rules which um, give you more of a figure gaming experience. I have also included a card-based ad hoc scenario generation system which gives you unique scenario generation capabilities. For those familiar with the SPI board game, there is nothing new here, but for those not, the sequence of play is a move combat system. Combat is based on a differential combat results table, and each element has a unique attack, defend, and movement allowance. I have admit this has worked extremely well and is ideal to introduce new players to the hobby without causing their brains to explode. It's actually ended up being the main set of rules I play these days. Frank Chadwick is working on a set of rules, currently called Breakthrough. With direct fire ranges of 2 inches and, a zone and the use of zones of control, many board game features will probably be included in these rules. Each formation consists of a number of battalion size elements. When an element is removed, the formation cohesion drops until it becomes ineffective. It seems to use the element as a strength point idea without the use of a large base. It'll be very interesting to see what this looks like when it comes available, but I must admit not hearing very much about these rules in the last six months, or actually last two or three years. I do hope they do come out, as they would be a shame if the project never results in a public set of rules. It is now almost three years later and the rules are still not available. I suspect they may never be published, but you never know. Good fortune may shine upon us all. With this version of the video, I've discovered there is a surprising number of rules which cater to this scale, with Mega Blitz being probably the most popular, at least historically, although it's certainly been not that popular these days. The other issue is the playing area. Most of these rules are more suitable to playing on a large map rather than figure gaming terrain. Bloody Big Battles uses large printed maps for their playing areas, for example. This reminds me a lot of Lost Battles, an excellent set of ancient rules which originally used cardboard pieces and a cardboard playing area. Although while it may have begun as a board game, today pretty much everyone I know uses typical miniature, miniature playing areas and figures when playing Lost Battles, so I expect there is no reason the same cannot occur with bloody big battles World War II. But in summary, the ability to command call using large units consisting of many elements which act as strength points repre represents a real innovation. The other trend I've noticed at this scale is the use of zones to regulate movement and combat, starting with KISS. The playing area is divided into 30 centimetre square zones, for example, which regulate movement and combat. This is very much a board game idea, but at this scale it kind of works. Very few sets of battalion scale rules attempt a traditional figure game approach, or at least they did at the beginning. These days that seems to be not the case. I feel the attraction of this scale is not normally felt by traditional low scale figure gamers. The players at this scale are often new figure gamers, although they are almost all board gamers, at least in their past, thus they're more likely to accept the idea of grids. One method of resolving many of the scale issues is to basically adopt board gaming mechanisms. The elements have either unique combat capabilities such as Mega Blitz, Bloody Big Battles and Divisional Commanders, or standard values irrespective of organisation such as with KISS. These do give you good games, both quick and with minimal effort. It could be argued that these game systems are more suitable to a board game format rather than for using figures, but players can still make nice looking playing areas to satisfy the Figure gaming itch, if so desired, when using these rules, or these style of rules. A classic success story is the Ancients Lost Battle by Philip Satan, which was originally a board game, but which was designed in such a manner to translate into figure gaming with ease. I suspect with World War II and Moderns this is more difficult, as it's important a set of rules manages to stay sufficiently into the figure gaming zone to make it acceptable to figure gaming players, otherwise... Why not just leave it as a board game? But in summary, at this scale there is no choice in many cases but to use board gaming systems. The idea of a unit consisting of a number of elements is not new, but in this case the element acts as strength points. The result is all combat is conducted by the unit, which is represented by a large base or movement tray or whatever. This is an interesting idea which allows 
allows you to have battalion size units while retaining the flavour of your individual figures. The elements can be any scale or represent any number of men or vehicles or artillery so you can achieve an impressive level of detail in your unit or movement tray based unit. Of course size may be an issue. At three times the size of a standard micro armour element we probably uh, only have nine strength points in it. If we move to four times the size or 12 centimetre bases, we can get 16 strength points. The issue becomes obvious as we grow the size of this movement tray base unit. This requires a truly huge playing area, even if it becomes playable. Once the playing area gets too large, you physically can't reach over it. I would guess that in order to have sufficient detail within your movement tray unit, each size side would probably be limited to mo no more than 12 of these movement tray units or battalions. If you reduce the unit detail, we can increase the number of these movement tray units, possibly up to a maximum 24 movement trays per side in an optimal situation. We can see the issue here. By increasing flavour, we reduce the size of the force mix, thus negating some of the benefits. Nonetheless, 12 battalions gives you a large division. And if we move to regimental scale, we can actually feel the core at this, at this point. The other interesting trends was the use of zones or square grids to regulate movement and combat. While I like the idea, I never saw an example where it was implemented successfully until I started playing the Ancient Battles, Lost Battles by Philip Sabin. There I thought it was only applicable to agent, uh, ancients until I start looking at KISS and its derivatives. Today I think there is a viable game system for this scale using grids. Each zone, let's say, could be a 30 centimetre square and elements move into a zone, expending movement points until they run out of movement points or run into an enemy. For combat, the, the, the regulation occurs by having all elements in adjacent zones conducting fire combat against each other, or this could occur when they reside in the same zone. To create the quick and simple games, or if you want to create a quick and simple game, this is a rather good idea, and I suspect is an idea that will continue to be developed. Um, I mean, for example, KISS uses it to the extreme. The only downside is the zone detracts from the playing area bling. Since I created this video, I've made a serious attempt to create a set of rules which uses this zone or square principle, and I've utterly failed. D-Day to Berlin is a success story, but its squares are rather small and obvious on the playing area. Duplicating the Lost Battles idea, I feel, is not a viable quest, not, not a viable strategy, uh, unless you go down the hyper-simple path of KISS, or you go to smaller squares, such as what D-Day to Berlin uses. One idea which um, you know I've discovered quite a few years ago and slowly I've developed and I think has legs, is the conversion of board games into a figure gaming format. You can, of course, use hexes, but many figure gamers dislike this as it reduces bling, including me. If someone has, can create a way of simulating Zox without using a hex grid, then I think this idea may become more popular. After a lot of effort in this area, I did achieve this, and it has worked surprisingly well. I must have run or had maybe about 50 or 60 games using these simulated grids across a wide range of different periods and it surprisingly enough works quite well. Board games are focused on reproducing actual military conflicts so for players interested in reproducing an actual military battle or conflict then using this kind of board game format may well be perfect. As with the other rules I've already covered, a critical factor in the success of this scale or any scale is completeness. Creating the rules is only a small part of providing a complete product or solution. Host of supporting material needs to be created to allow players to quickly assemble an army and play a game. Apart from Neuschwerpunk, no battalion scale rules has the support material required to be truly successful. Perhaps Mega Blitz or KISS comes the closest. This is an area which needs to be developed before this scale can hope to gain wider acceptance. And so we come to a bit of a summary here. As with other rules, the main factors which result in a set of rules becoming popular can be summed up with these five basic points. Playability, ease of learning, three to six game, sorry, hour game duration, supporting army lists and equipment lists and scenarios. The battalion scale rules are all very playable, but do need more scenarios and supporting materials to be successful. One valid question you may ask is why is this scale so popular or let's not use the word popular why are so many people interested in this scale 
And also, why does this scale exhibit an enormous amount of innovation and experimentation? The sweet spot for micro armor is skirmish, squad and platoon scale. That's where most of the games are really being played now. On the other hand, apart from skirmish, which does attract new players, most squad and platoon scale games are being played by long-time experienced players generally. I mean, some skirmish players may sort of move up into that area, but it's um, not that common. When we move beyond squad and platoon scale, the interest among non-figure gamers goes up again. Perhaps not to the extent of skirmish rules, but there is a reasonable body of new players who are interested in trying these larger scale rules. I do not know the reason, but I I suspect it has to do with the type of game you simulate. New players, specifically those from a board gaming background, like the idea of simulating an actual historical battle. At skirmish and squad, this is not easy, as there are few historical battles which are well known at this scale. Skirmish rule gets around this by not caring about historical scenarios and instead using historical or scenario frameworks, which works extremely well. At platoon scale, there are some well-known battles, but most people want an operational scale game. Perhaps the German breakthrough in France in 1940, or one of the Kursk attacks, or perhaps the Soviet Korsun attack, which resulted in that pocket. I'm sure they would like something larger, but once we move beyond the battalion scale, we may be better off with a board game. Regardless, if you have a battalion scale game system, it is minimal trouble to scale it up to regimental, so perhaps I'm wrong. Division will maybe the bridge too far, but regimental scale may definitely work. We'll cover this in later videos. And so we come to a conclusion of my episode 5, my video series on micro armor game system design, which in this case provides an overview of battalion scale figure gaming rules for World War II and Cold War periods. Alle guten Dingen, kommen zu einem Ende.